Before this video starts, man, I want to give a huge shout out to Zigzag for sponsoring this video. In every video, we're about to be giving away a Zigzag pack to every artist that we interview. Inside of these packs, you can see it's, bro, it's like a care package. You got ashtrays, you got papers, you got cones, everything you need. Go check out their links. Links will be down in the description. Tell them Marty sent you. And without further ado, hope you guys enjoy the video. All right, so who am I here with? <laughs> Rohan Marley. <laughs> Rohan Marley? That's right. All right, so for the people out there that don't really know what you do, can you kind of explain a little bit about stuff and what you do? Well, uh, well, um, that's a great question. What do I do? Well, I try to do many different things. Like, one of the things I do mostly is being a father. That's what I do. I'm a father, you know. I'm a lover. I have a beautiful girlfriend. Her name is Métis. I love her so much. <laughs> so I'm a lover. Uh, you, lover boy? Uh, you gotta ask her that. <laughs> but I'm actually a lover. I'm a father. I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, I'm a brother. I'm an uncle. I'm a cousin. I'm a relative of many, many ones. But what I do do on my daily, um, my one of the most important things I do do is my um, I'm a business development for the Marley family, as well as on my own. I'm an entrepreneur. I started a few entities. I started Marley Coffee, which is um, a coffee company founded. Actually talk a little bit about yeah, that. Right. I'm a founder of House of Marley as it's a family business. I'm a member of that. I'm also a member of all Marley businesses. Like there's another entity called Marley Natural, all family business. We have Marley Beverage. We have um, a bunch of things. We have um, we actually have our own. Um, Radio station on the XM Radio, Tough Kong Radio, Bob Marley's Tough Kong Radio. We just opened up a fir our first restaurant in Montego Bay, Bob Marley's One Love Restaurant. And then for myself, um, I just launched my first company, which I'm very proud of. It's called uh, Lion Order. That's a cannabis movement. Um, we're out of Michigan. The legal, the legal stuff. <laughs> legal. So that's what I do. Um, so you said Lion Order. Did, did, did you watch Law and Order? Like that's why you got the name? No, Lion Order started from being a lion and growing up, um, you know, Rastafari people. Our movement is about principles, love, a way of life. And that way of life is a lot to do with the, the lion personality, you know. So we grew up believing in ourselves that we're upright lions. And then, you know, being a football player for the University of Miami, I kind of developed this way of a, a way of being a lion on the football field. So with my friends and throughout life, we used to build this mantra that we talk about how we need to be on the field. And then the word would be like, yo, listen, it's lion order. So it's like a mantra become a mantra, then became a message, then became a movement. And now I've made something tangible, which is a line order. Here we have our vapes, which is line order vapes. So I've made something very tangible now with line order. So that's what it really is. So, but man, what this say? Zigzag. Oh, zigzag! You brought in it with you. <laughs> I, 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 I was going to bring, but I couldn't bring a lot on the flight. And I'm assuming since you know you're Bob Marley's son, you have a lot of Bob Marley papers and stuff like that. But I did bring you a little gift from zigzag yeah. you know to grind your broccoli and stuff like that really? you know it's a grinder wow this is a flour mill yeah. wow a zigzag flour mill i love these you can grind your broccoli and your vegetables and this is absolutely great for broccoli tomato whatever you want to call it <laughs> well anyway just so you know man this company I really love. I love. I grew up loving zigzags, of course, because you know. And it's like a Rasta on it, right? Rastafarian on it. He looks like a Rasta. Yeah, he looks like a pirate type of. <laughs> yeah, but I know the. I know. I know. This is one of my favorite products, man. So I'm thanking you for it. It's called a flour. It's called a flour mill, and zigzag is the brand on it. But it's a flour mill. And if you can notice up here, this is how you mill your. So you mill your herb instead of grinding your herb. We mill our herbs. So thank you. It's a good gift. I didn't even know that. Yeah. So that's better than a traditional grinder? Yeah, it's actually for me. Because I like to flower my herb, you know? So when you use the flower mill, it kind of flowers out the herb. So that's what it is. No, There's no blades. 
So yeah, this is so it's a flour mill zigzag present. <laughs> Thank you. I know you'll put that to good use. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you, you talked about, you know, the whole meaning behind, you know, lying. What are your thoughts? Line order. Line order. But you kind of went with like the, you know, the, the, the meaning behind that stuff like that. What are your thoughts on when Snoop Dogg changed his name to Snoop Lion? <laughs> Great question because you know Snoop is one of our brethren from ever since, and um, I was a part of that movement when he came. You know when he said Snoop Lion, which is it, which he is still Snoop Lion. Because once you're a lion, you're a lion forever. But you change his name back, though. You can't change your name back to anything. You have both names now. I mean, you have you have he has two names. Yeah, he has Snoop Lion and he has Snoop Dog. What do you mean change your name back? How do you change your? You have your. You, did you change your name back from your nickname? What's your nickname? Marty. And what's your other name? True. Uh, Marty Lion. Now we have Marty. <laughs> no, no. So, to your point, though, Snoop Lion. You know, we were part of that, and you know, I really love that he did that because he tapped into the the reggae genre and hip hop, which has always been there. So it was a great crossover for the world to see that. You know, Snoop Lion respect the reggae culture. That, that was that was dope. I, that was that was kind of like left field. I didn't expect him to do that. Yeah. Um. So you spoke about Rastafari. So you a Rasta? I'm assuming like. So does the assumption. So is it true? Because <laughs> we like the hair and stuff. Yeah, we like the locks. We have locks. Here you have. I have. I have Here. I have a, a coconut. Yeah, you gotta have a coconut kind of head shape too. Oh! <laughs> but yeah, I am a Rastafari, and you know, Rastafari is a teaching that we um, we were born into it because my dad is a Rasta man as well, a Rastafari. So, so the father, so the son. So we were raised in that teaching, and as a youth, you know, you grew up around a lot of elders. But I took it upon myself to go to Ethiopia to learn about Rastafari. Oh, it, it didn't I'm sorry, I didn't want to So it didn't originate in Jamaica, it came from Ethiopia? Oh, okay. Yeah. Haile Selassie I the first. He was crowned in 1930, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Concord Land of the yeah, tribe the, of the, Judah. The, 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 the King of Kings, Triple H? King of King. Is that Triple H? Yeah. Is that Triple what you get out of it? King of King is that Triple H or King of Kings? Yeah, he's the ghost of the King of Kings. Triple well, H. Time to play the game. Never saw. But where the Triple H? I I think like his original name was Hunter Herms Helmsley. So how does that become Triple H? Or what I'm telling you? No, no, cause it's like a, like like he used to call himself the King of Kings, Triple H. I'm telling you about Ethiopia. No, no, I, I, I know, I know, I know, I know, bro. Give me back the mic. This man here. Where you come from, man? Mexico. Well, in 19 some years, His Majesty did visit Mexico City. <laughs> Haile Selassie did visit Mexico City. So do your homework. Yes, do Wait, your Mexico homework. Mexico City is in America, not Mexico. Wait, it's in Texas, right? No, 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 no. What's what's the capital of Mexico? I don't know. Guatemala. I don't know. This guy. Wait, don't you're confusing me, man. You talking about New Mexico? No, no, Mexico, Mexico. Mexico City is in Mexico, man. Oh, it is? Oh, I, I, I apologize. Oh, I know it's about <laughs> Brooklyn, Queens, Bronx, <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, so anyway, sorry about that. Well, Haile Selassie is the king of kings, lords of lords, conquer and tribe of Judah. So in 1930, he was crowned that. So we as Rastafari people, well, we have, we have, we of the Western world, the Af from the African diaspora, we looked upon him, His Majesty as a new and coming redeemer, you know, the Christ in the flesh. So we say that, and that's who we look up to as our leader, our teacher, our father of this earth. So we call Haile Selassie I, our God, our King. Sin? Yeah, so that's how you get Rastafari. Rastafari. So wait, so did you guys invent Rastafari and all that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, of course, everything Rasta we invented. <laughs> Do you like Rasta pasta? I'm not too fan. I've tried. I've tried. I've tried it. They, you know, actually, when I went to University of Miami, there's a quarterback. His name is Frank Costa. 
and I was the first time I heard the name Rasta Pasta. <laughs> Cause they used to call me Rasta. They call him Pasta. <laughs> so speaking that you were in the uh, Miami University, Univers University of Miami. You know, I, I'm gonna get it right. You used to play for them. How was that? And then you also used to play in Toronto too. Uh, or, or Ottawa. What, what was it? That's Ottawa is not in Toronto. Ottawa is in Ontario and Toronto is always in Ontario. The team is called Ottawa. Ottawa Rough Riders. Yeah, so I played for the University of Miami between uh, like 1991 to 1995. I was a linebacker there. I played with the likes of like The Rock. You know The Rock? You know? Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa. <laughs> you talk about wrestling, you know The Rock? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, who doesn't know The Rock? Who yeah, I heard you talking know? about Triple H, Hunter, Hunter, Hunter. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So you, pl you played on the same team as The Rock? In Toronto or Miami? For a guy with a microphone that says zigzag, how much homework did you really do? I did homework, but I didn't know you played with The Rock. <laughs> yeah, I played with The Rock. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, on Miami or Toronto? Miami, he played, The Rock played for the University of Miami, and I played for the University of Miami. But he did play in the CFL also, but we played on separate teams. Well, so how was that like, you know, playing alongside The Rock? Did you kind of expect him to be the person he is today or like you didn't really kind of see that in him? Well, at that time, he wasn't called The Rock. He was named Dwayne Johnson. And we call him Dewey. And we loved him because I love him because his uncle is super fly, Jimmy Snuka. And, oh. <laughs> and then his dad, you know, Rock Johnson, the original Rock. So we grew up loving the Rock father and his family. And we loved him. But we were footballers. We were, we were on the same team. We were grinding together. It wasn't really, hey, that's Rock, just like anybody, like, hey, that's Bob's son. Yeah. They're more like, hey, I hope you can play football. <laughs> did, you, did, you, did, you, did you, like, try to, like, keep that relationship? Or do you guys still speak or anything? Or, um, nah. What is it? Can you imagine trying to keep a relationship or a friendship with someone that's the most famous human being? No, <laughs> like, I I, hey, Rock, Rohan, Rohan's on the phone. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell him I'm gonna call him back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Come on. The guy is like super famous. Yeah, but you know what? If we were to see each other, it'd be, it's brotherhood. But he's busy, you know what I'm saying? Come on, be realistic. He's guys super busy, family and older now, but it's still brotherhood, you know what I mean? And we do see each other on social media at times, but still a brotherhood. So if we were to see each other tomorrow, today, it's the same love. Yeah, yeah man. That's fire, that's fire. So I want to ask you about this quote. I kind of don't remember it, but I wrote it down. So I'm going to tell you what this quote means to you. So the famous quote that your dad said was, when you smoke herb, herb, reveal yourself. What does that mean to you? So when you smoke the herb, the herb reveal you to yourself. So herb is part of the whole medicinal movement, you know? And that movement is about self, self awareness and higher consciousness, you know. So when you're smoking good herbs, like the herbs we love to smoke at Lion Order, kind of open up your mind, you know. You go within, and you start to really judge yourself because no man can judge you. So the, that's what it really means. Is really you're opening within your your own iris and tapping into the ether, which is really your higher self. So it's really looking within, you know, it's like looking into the mirror and looking to, looking into your own eyes. That's kind of really what it means. Like mirror gazing? That's uh, so what you call it, mirror gazing? Yeah, isn't that when you look at your, yourself in the mirror for like a, a 10 minutes? Oh, you do that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it though. Done it? I've done it. Can I ask you a question about that? Sure. So, so, so like, are you like spiritual? Like, do you like sun gaze, moon gaze and meditate and stuff like that? Earth, do you earth, earthing? You know what? I'm gonna say this, and you might be the first person I ever told this to, but I'm a shroomer. Are you the shrooms? Yeah, I'm a shroomer, I'm a shroomer. So I do tap into the ecosystem of our existence. I do tap into like the present moment. And I love, I love to shroom because again, it's really into the spiritual realm in the present moment so yeah i do and meditation is a part of that because to meditate one have to be still so it's about stillness you know so when i shroom 
It's all about being stillness and finding the higher self, the higher heights. And especially, I love colors, you know. Do you earth as well? What is that? Earth. I think it's called Do you earth. earth. Earthing where you where you you walk barefoot. Man, I walk around barefoot just regardless. What do you mean earthing? <laughs> with, uh, on the grass, on concrete. I can't. I walk around barefoot. I was born barefooted, man. So <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's like a real thing. Like, if you I, I, look, it's a real thing to you because someone made up this name. But this is what how we live, man. I don't wear. I wear shoes. Like, I mean, I thought it was like a spiritual thing, you know, connect with the earth and stuff. Yeah, people call it that, but it's just natural. Like, listen, spirituality is just living a life and being good. Living like Larry from SpongeBob. I don't know Larry. You never watched SpongeBob? Who? You never watched Spongebob or heard of Spongebob. I don't... Let me tell you something. I've heard and I've seen Spongebob, but he ain't none of my friends. Oh, so wait, so... <laughs> so like that episode when he had like the napkin and the penny and he like that? Like when he had no friends and stuff? <laughs> wait a minute. Who's the guy with the big nose on Spongebob? The green guy and the big nose? Squidward. Squidward. <laughs> I look like Squidward. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you go bald. Yo, if I go bald, would I look like Squidward? <laughs> yeah, that's funny as hell. That's funny as hell. Yo, that's actually hilarious. I never heard that before. Yeah, I, I you always. Said you like SpongeBob. So everyone that likes something, there's something. You said you like SpongeBob. So everyone that likes something, there's something about that something that someone relates to. I mean, I don't know. I was just a, I was just a child, and they just <laughs> on the TV. I don't know. I was just watching it. I was but, just, but, I, but I bet he, I bet you, he's your favorite character. Nah, nah, my favorite. Come on, nah, nah, nah. look at him. My favorite character, my favorite character was Courage the Cowardly Dog. I don't know if you ever heard of Courage the Cowardly Dog. That was my show. Hey, you know what my favorite? All right. You know my favorite show is actually not favorite show, but one of them was Cat Dog. You know Yo, Cat Dog. Cat dog yeah. <laughs> they say they say I look like Cat Dog too sometimes. <laughs> cat Dog, Cat Dog. <laughs> How was it like you know growing up or you know around your dad being that he you know he is so influential to many millions of people? Like how was that you know growing up around? You know what? Um, great question because my father, um, he left this earth in 1981, and nine years old. Yes. Yeah, so, thank you. But um, we launched in the movie now, the One Love movie, my dad's movie. So, you're gonna get to see like some of the most beautiful moments in like our lives, and what we come to know now as men that we didn't know when we were boys at nine years old so you gotta get, you get a chance to reflect on that and now at, when you're older now you're gonna like really appreciate of it more because you didn't know what was happening at that age you're more worried about playing outside like certain little things you know but in the movie the one love movie the one love movie is gonna be able to look like it, it kind of like gives us another view of what we were living in at the moment now sitting as older men and older women brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers and and watching that life that we were so close to it but not really understanding it because you don't have the knowledge so the one love movie the bob marley one love movie that's coming next year is going to show us all of this and you're going to see that man when could we expect the movie? Do you have a date or anything? I'm gonna have to get a rain check on that because with the strike that's happening now, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how that's working out, but I'm sure the movie is between like um, a February and August setup right now. I don't. I don't have the exact date. Maybe there's a date, but I'm gonna have to call my brother Ziggy and my sister Sadella because they know more than me when it comes down to those type of things. You kind of do look like Bob Marley a little bit. Not gonna lie. But out of everybody, who you would think resembles your dad? The Give me this damn. Give me this mic. Give me a picture of your dad. Show me a picture of your father. <laughs> Does anybody tell you? Let me ask you a question. Has anyone ever told you you look like your dad? Yes. Thank you. 
out of everybody who is <laughs> out of everybody who do you think looks the most like your dad out of everybody well obviously we're all gongites you know we're gongites what's that well my dad's the original tough gong it's like a viking or something Tough gong, uh, gong, uh, gong, 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 G-O-N-G. Like, like the, when they hit the, the, the gong. gong. So the gong sound resonates, never like vibration. Gong. It's like um. Yeah. <laughs> to a meditation. Um. So it's the same as gong. So he's a tough. <laughs> <laughs> So it's the same as Tough Gong, right? So Tough Gong is my dad's nickname growing up, right? They call him Tough Gong because it's like the leader. Gong is like the leader in Jamaica. Like Gong is like the godfather. Yeah. So you call him that Tough Gong. So we're Gongites. Like, you know, we're followers of Tough Gong. That's our leader, Tough Gong. So we, we become Gongites. So all the boys are Gongites. Am I a Gongite? I'm What's your dad's name? Pablo. What's his nickname? Escobar. Well, you may be an Escobar Ites. <laughs> if that's your dad's name, you're an Escobar Ites. Escobar Ites. Uh, what's, his, what's your dad's nickname? Like, yeah, your dad with a name like Pablo Escobar, your dad don't have a nickname. <laughs> with Ledger name like that, your dad don't have a nickname. Huh? Hmm, you're funny. <laughs> are you like you or your family, are you guys still close with the Whaleys? Wow, he said the Whaleys. <laughs> the Whaleys. The Whaleys. The Whalers, man. Weeping and wailing, like wailing, bawling, crying. The name Whalers came about when my no he doesn't know it's all, it's all, it, do your damn homework. The way the name Whalers came about because you know the my dad and Peter Touch and Bonnie Whaler and uh, Beverly and Mama Rita, early Whalers. They started that because of from the, their Bible people, you know. So it was like the wailing wall, the wailing, like bawling, weeping and wailing, wailing, like always crying, like wailing the pain, the struggle. So the whalers are that they represent the struggle of the people. So they got the name the whalers. So that's why it's Bob Marley and the whalers. And like I told you, man, you watch this movie, you're gonna appreciate love it because I love your questions and yeah, I, lo I love them because you know how old are you? 28. Close. 26. Ah, uh, you're not that old. You're young. So you got long years to go. And yeah, you got a lot of years to go still. I have children older than you. Wow. But it's okay, it's okay. I'm still younger than you. Rastafarian years? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, in Rastafarian years. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but the whalers, it's Bob Marley and the whalers. And yeah. The Whalers, I forgot your question, man. <laughs> are you for, my question was, are you and your family, are you still close to the Whalers? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What you're going to realize is that when you watch the Bob Marley One Love Movie, movie when, you watch the one, when you watch the One Love Movie, damn it, skip it, skip it, sorry, go ahead. Anyway, when you watch the One Love Movie, most of the actors in the movie are first-time actors, but they're all related to the members of the band in some way, shape, or form, as well as affiliated with the movement early then. Like it's like the drummer's, the drummer's cousin son, the guitarist son, the backup singer's daughter, the this one's son, the that one that. My brother Ziggy made sure to build a great cast. So the great question you're asking, yes, we are. And obviously the Wheelers now that, that are performing today, um, it's a, really the band leader, it's family man's son, Aston Barrett. So the Wheelers are still doing their thing around, you know what I mean? And there's, a, there's a, also the elder Wheelers that are still doing their thing, but the young generation is the Wheelers. If you look them up online, you'll find them. And we're very close with the Wheelers, and we always will be close with the Wheelers. I'm, I'm, I'm there. And sorry. You reach for the mic. Nah, I, Oops, nah, sorry. I, I don't. <laughs> and you know, um, the one uh, one thing I want to say to that, just recently we lost one of the whalers, and he's actually one of my dad's graphic artists, Neville Garrick. 
So he passed away like a week ago. So, you know, condolences to his family. If his family is watching, condolences to you guys. Yeah, man. Question, one more question. Yeah. Um, so, like, how has your dad's music... Do, do, okay, so does your dad's music kind of, like, still affect you guys to this day? Do you and your family, does it affect you guys? Listening to, you know, his music and stuff? Oh, you mean, like, what kind of effect do you mean? Like, what do you mean? I say does it mean, what do you mean affect you? Like, yeah, I can break this down. Like, like, like... Can I hold the mic? Because I'm going to take it back. <laughs> break it down. Like, does it, like, some in some way, shape, or form affect you guys? Just hearing, you know, your dad's voice or, or just hearing his music? <laughs> well, let me give you the story, my G. So, like I tell you, I got a question. By the way, I got a question. All right. So, like I said, music in general, right? Um, our father's music. Like I said, my dad left this earth in 1980 when we were young kids. So, what we what we grew up having is our dad's voice and his music as a lesson because the music that he created wasn't just for himself or for his children. It was for uh, humanity in regards to how he sees life and how he expresses love and how he feels like it's the right way to bring people together through words, you know? Because words sound become power, words sound become flesh. The, word be, the words manifest becomes, you know, your thoughts, you know? So when you, your thoughts become you, you know? So your question, yes, because if I'm sad, I turn my dad's music on, it cheers me up. If I'm going through any kind of issue, if I'm gonna go play a game, if I'm gonna play, and my dad's music is what aligns me. It's like really like. Aligns your chakras. Yeah. Say it, say it again. It aligns your chakras and stuff. Yes. Because they gotta do with meditation and spiritual and stuff like that. A lot of people don't know about their chakras and their higher self and all that. I, I dibble and dabble. I don't know too much about spiritual stuff, but. So, you know what Rastafari teachings about? There's no separation, you know, because like every moment is a spiritual moment because we exist, you know. So there is the once you exist, you are spiritual because you're both spirit and flesh. So no matter what, you have to have a your spirituality, you dig. But our goal is to channel the good the goodness from the ether because there's a lot of sounds out there a lot of words you know a lot of people that say a lot of things that aren't what it's supposed to be for you you know so you got to tap into yourself like we talk about my father saying herb open up your mind open up yourself make you believe yourself make you know yourself get you closer to yourself so it's about tapping into your ether tapping into yourself your higher consciousness because when you start feeling good about life you start feeling good about other people and life is like that because we're all brothers and sisters in the universe but it starts with you you know so if you feel good about you feel good about your day obviously you're going to make others others people they feel better because that's what it's about right you're not dependent never become a dependent never feel like you have to cry on someone's shoulder you dig yeah where the people can find you at like your instagram um social media let me tell you where you can find us you can find lion order at lion order movement Li look, sorry at lion order it's very simple on uh, instagram you can find us at marley coffee you can find us at bob marley <laughs> you can find us everywhere you can find us all over if you keep on looking. <laughs> there's lionorder.com, there's marleycoffee.com, there's the house of marley.com. So if you want to find us, just look for us at Line Order. Where you can find me? You're going to find me where I am, where I'll always be. And it's right here in the place to be, Rogo Marley. <laughs> yeah, you can find me at Ro Marley on the Instagram and a few other places. Thank you for your time. <laughs> All right, bro, so I want to come out with this, like, fragrance, and I want to know your opinion on it because you're a lion. Lions, they lead. They don't follow. So, obviously, you you, you lead, so you have a good fragrance on you for to have the followers follow you. <laughs> so, I want to know what, what you, you got. I got. I, it's called Coconut Fragrance. It's yes. a new line that I'm trying to come out with. Bring it on. Okay, got you. Give it a little whiff. Oh! Take your nose at that. 
Thinking of. <laughs> get the ball! Oh! What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck?